agenda. Uh, there is a correction to item one. We'd want to note that the building is going to be 20 by 5, not 20 by 20, and it will be 100 square feet, not 400. Other than that, if there's any other additions or corrections. I move the approval of the amended agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, approval of the October 29th minutes. I have a correction. On page two, it's a typo. In the big paragraph, one, two, three, four, five lines up where it says allows for a minimum three foot freeboard. Got it. Yeah, minimum is spelled wrong. Okay, any other additions or corrections to the minutes? Not an entertain a motion? Move to motion, approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have six decision items tonight, today. Uh, our first one is a request by Hassan Purik on behalf of Fusion Bar for a variance to expand, expand a legal non-conforming use to allow for the construction of a 20 by 5, 100 square foot outdoor smoking area located at 1915 Borland Avenue. Staff report. Okay, um, yeah, it's a request by Heisman Purick uh, on behalf of Fusion Bar for a variance to expand a legal non-conforming use to allow for a 20 by 5 smoking room addition at the river of the building located at 1950 Borland Avenue. A variance is required because no uh, non-limited alcohol sales use is allowed to be within 200 feet of a protected use, uh, which includes a dwelling, or be within 200 feet of another non-limited alcohol sales use. The site is legal non-conforming use because the site is less than 250 from protected uses and less than 250 feet to another non-limited alcohol sales use. Therefore, approval of a variance is required to explain the legal non-conforming use to allow for a 20 by 5 smoking room addition. A proposed project consists of constructing a, a new 20 by 5 smoking room on the, the rear north side of the building at 1950 Borland Avenue. Uh, property is zoned C2 Commercial District and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance. Uh, properties to the west are zoned R2 1 and 2 Single Family Residence District. Uh, the request to construct a 25, 20 by 5 smoking room addition would appear to uh, uh, would, would appear to have a negative impact in the area as there are multiple residences within the immediate vicinity of the Fusion Bar, including a dwelling to the, to the west that was proposed addition would be approximately 30 feet from the property line of the dwelling and approximately 60 feet from uh, the dwelling. There, are, there have been uh, complaints from the residences to the west regarding the bar, including complaints of loud noise, music disturbing the area, expansion of the bar by the addition, of an outdoor smoking area would not appear to be compatible with the adjacent residential uses. Um, the uh, request would uh, be in conformance with the classification of the area as commercial in the future land use map uh, within the City of Waterloo Comprehensive Land Use Plan. Uh, the proposed uh, project consists of uh, constructing the 20 by 5 smoking area addition on the rear of the building at 1950 Borland Avenue. The Fusion Bar is classified as a non-limited alcohol sales use, but is a legal non-conforming use because the bar is located within 200 feet of a protected use and within 250 feet of another non-limited alcohol sales use. Therefore, approval of the variance is required to expand the legal non-conforming use to allow for a 20 by 5 smoking room addition. The 20 by 5 smoking room addition will consist of a corrugated metal roof, corrugated metal side walls, a four inch chain link fence with hand rails, an open door area that is 10 by 4 feet, and two open windows that are 8 by 5 in size. It should be noted that the Fusion Bar has received several noise complaints in the past, and there are several homes that are adjacent in close proximity to the site. Expansion of the bar. Uh, by the addition of an outdoor smoking area would, would appear to be compatible would, would appear to be compatible with the adjacent residential uses. The bar has an existing smoking area that was constructed on the east side of the building. However, the smoking area is illegal as there were no approvals to expand the non-conforming use and there were no permits to build the addition. 
If the variance is denied, the existing smoking area would have to be removed as well. Um, it should also be noted that a neighbor at 1911 Borland Avenue is against the proposed project. The owner has notified the Waterloo Police Department multiple times over the years regarding noise complaints. Uh, criteria one, lack of reasonable return. There would not appear to be a lack of reasonable return with request because bar patrons could still smoke outside without a 20 by 5 smoking room addition. Uniqueness, there would not appear to be a uniqueness to the request. The bar is a legal non-conforming use because it is within 250 feet of a protected use and less than 250 feet from another non-limited alcohol sales use. An expansion of the non-conforming use would not be compatible with the surrounding residential uses. Uh, public considerations. Approval of the 20 by 5 smoking room addition request could negatively affect homes within close proximity to the bar. The Fusion Bar has had uh, noise complaints from neighboring properties in the past and the proposed addition would cause patrons to congregate at a point even closer to adjacent residential uses. Therefore, Steck recommends that the request by Isom <coughs> Curic on behalf of Fusion Bar for a variance to expand illegal non-conforming use to allow for the 20 by 5 smoking addition be denied for the following reasons. Uh, persons could still smoke outside of the bar without the smoking addition. The site is a currently a, a legal non-conforming use and approval of 20 by 5 smoking room addition would simply make the property more out of compliance with the zoning ordinance. Approval of the request would have a negative impact on surrounding area. Uh, Fusion Bar has had numerous noise complaints in the past by adjacent neighbors. However, if the request were to be approved, staff recommends that uh, be approved subject to the following conditions that the applicant uses uh, different construction materials for the 20 by 5 smoking room additions such as horizontal vinyl siding and that the uh, smoking room addition be restricted to be located on the east side of the building as opposed to the north side okay i i just have a couple questions sure how it, it's a legal non-conforming use how did it get to be this usage was it there before the zoning ordinance, or was it voted on by the committee, this group at one time? Eric Schrader, city planner. Jeez. Um, it would have been in place before the amendment to the zoning ordinance. So um, I think it was around 2007 uh, is when the city of Waterloo first made an amendment to the zoning ordinance regarding alcohol sales uses. There's been several amendments from, uh, to, there was uh, the big change in 2007, some further amendment in 2009, and I think further amendment in 2011 uh, regarding alcohol sales. So uh, it was uh, with those amendments, it did not meet the setback requirements that those amendments put in place, but it was a, in existence since before that, so it became a legal yeah. nonconforming use. I thought it was older than that. Uh, second question, um, if, if they put up a five foot ceiling over the, a canopy of some kind, does that require a building permit and would it require our approval yes any sort of structure even if it's just a, a roof structure with no enclosures on the side would require a building permit and would still be considered an expansion of the non-conforming use okay any other questions i have a question with the change in dimensions of this smoking room addition did it change the um, approximate distance from the property in the impact of the neighborhood and surrounding land use paragraph. This is Schrader with staff. We don't have a real detailed site plan um, with showing uh, dimensions, uh, setback dimensions to the property line. So we were just approximating those. So it certainly could change it a few feet, but it's obviously still um, the, the setback requirement to protected uses is 250 feet from property line to property line, and this one is a, a zero foot setback since it directly adjoins. I was just kind of trying to point out the proximity of the actual proposed addition to the residential property line and the actual proposed addition to the dwelling on that residential property. So those numbers you know, could tweak a little with the different sizing, but they're not gonna be substantially different. Thank you. One more question. In um, Under staff comments, you make a statement that if the variance request is denied, the existing smoking area will have to be removed. Well, if it's approved, does that non-conforming one on the east side have to be removed regardless? Uh, good point. Yes, it would have to. 
Um, well, yeah, they didn't request any approval on that one, so yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Is there currently an exit door on the north side of the building where it's proposed for the smoking area to go? This is Western staff. I was mm -hmm. looking at this picture and I was there. It does not appear that there is a door, but we can have the applicant uh, maybe explain what the intent, what the plan was. Yeah, just a second. We'll, we'll come back. Is that your only question, April? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? Okay. Um, if there's anybody that wishes to speak in favor of the request, if you please come up to the podium, give your name and address. So if you'd like to step up, sir. Over here. I have just a couple of questions about this smoking area. I have this smoking area about five, six years over there. This I have permit with this. I'm just put some roof. Now I have a renewal license. It's told me I'm coming and ask permit. Second, I have enough room. Somebody put nine by 20. This is 20 by five. I'm put this smoking area about people about loud, I will put people together. It's not go around building. And second one, I work just 10 o'clock, 10 to 10. I'm not work longer, just 10 to 10, my body is working. This is daytime. Okay. I have just one, one neighbor who is complaining. We call 86 time cops for, for me from no reason. Cops, you have everything inside. In paper, I'm cut 10 to 10 is working. Still, I'm seeing this neighbor, same one neighbor complain all the time. First, this is west side. I have 200 feet to neighbor. I have everything. I'm seeing. I have from other neighbor 27 foot. What kind of reason? From one neighbor, complain. I'm not understanding, guys. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have a concern if we move it back to the east side for the approval, where the existing one is now? I like to put in west side about this neighbor. It's complain all the time. I like put people with west side. It's neat. This is exit door. It's a little bit covered from neighboring everything. I'm I'm confused. There, there isn't a. There doesn't appear to be an exit door in the back. Is that correct? Yeah. There is. Yeah. This exit door. But there's one there now to the current smoking. Yeah. Okay. Which is on the east side of the building. Right. No, this east side. East side, yeah. Most east side. It's but there's no exit door on the west side of the building. No. I'm sorry. It's well, south, southeast, this, this side. No, it would be the north side of the building where you want to go. Is there a door on the back of the building? No. Okay. Mr. Schrader or staff. So just to clarify, are you proposing this new smoking area on the north side of the building or the east side of the building? Same space. I have no smoking area, sir. So same you, space. Same space. Yeah. Okay. So that was not properly conveyed to staff either. It was our understanding that it was being proposed on the north side of the building. Okay. Okay. Any other questions of the? Okay, so there's an existing smoking structure, right? And that is where you want to improve it. Yeah. And there's the door. Yeah. 
Is that it? Um, I'm wondering about the staff suggestion about changing the building material. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm agreeing from everything. What kind of change? They suggested. Two pages, sorry, sorry. Right there. Okay, well, this is the metal. And then you all in the staff report suggested maybe horizontal vinyl siding. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions of the? And just for our record, you are Mr. Pers is Persick. Yeah. Okay. And the size is twenty feet by five. Feet. By five. I need just a little bit proof of keep up people. With this side, it's not neighbor complaining in this. I'm put this area with the exit door. About okay. 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 All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience who to speak in favor of the request? Okay, is there anybody in the audience who to speak against the request? If you come up and give your name and address. You have to pull that microphone way down for you there. Okay. My name is Rosella Thompson. I live at 1911 Borland Avenue. Can you hear me okay? <clears throat> I'm here today to ask you not to approve the Fusion Bar's request to build a 20 by 5 smoking deck, especially if it's going to be on the north side because it will be close to my property. It would be 35 feet for my property and that would make the deck very close to the proximity of my house, almost to my backyard. I am very concerned about the noise level and degree of smoke filtering over with this proposed deck so close to my house. Based on my experience with the bar from what I have, <clears throat> I have observed firsthand from the outdoor smoking area on the east side of the building, the customers are out there smoking out there with open containers, which is against the law, and they also allow them to walk around the perimeter with open containers. This bar has been a nuisance since it opened in 2008. They have been declared a nuisance bar twice, multiple calls to the police station. They've had two shootings and had their liquor license denied twice. So with this record, I hope you can understand how concerned I am if this smoking deck is approved. Thank you. Ma'am? Ma'am, if you could stay at the podium for a second in case we have some questions. Okay. Um, so you're even against leaving where it is now? No, well, it's a small one, you know. Yeah, they get a little noisy and... And like I say, they sit out there and drink alcohol, which is against the law. Okay. And they do get noisy, but if they would put it on the north side, that would be disaster. Okay. But if we deny it, just for clarification, they can still go outside and smoke, and they can do everything they've been doing, then that would not be Ill illegal. So would it be better for it to be enclosed in your in well, your if mind? You, if you put it on the east side, that probably would be better. Okay. But they aren't allowed to walk around the perimeter. Why well, that would they be allowed? A, either code violation or a police yeah. action. No, if they would put it on the east side, I guess I would have no objections to that. Okay. As long Thanks. as they adhere to the laws. Yeah, we understand. Okay. I'm just trying to clarify that they could still do exactly what they're doing without the structure there. Well, it, it's further away from my property. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else wish to speak against the request? Okay. Is there any other? Okay. This is Schrader with staff. So there was obviously some you know, misunderstandings on what exactly the request was, where the request was. Uh, staff was concerned even on the east side, but, uh, but obviously less concerned, but based on the uh, most uh, affected property owner to the west, 
indicating her not providing or not having opposition if there's a replacement uh, 20 by 5 on the east side of the building staff is willing to change our recommendation to recommend approval with the conditions as noted in the staff report including the um, more appropriate you know aesthetically pleasing material okay leave in there Derek so the existing smoking area that's on the east side was built without permit correct so that's in violation correct correct so if so approved by the board of adjustment they would have to remove that and start and over. obtain a permit for the replacement structure in that location and if it's denied that would have to be removed as they well. They would also have to remove the existing, yeah. <clears throat> okay. I would think that, just my own opinion here, before we call the vote, is that if you, we enclose it better, it's going to look more aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing, and it they're still going to be able to go out. They'd still go out and smoke. That's not going to be stopped. So if we confine them into a little bit better area with a roof over it, maybe a benefit to the to the area as as opposed to a detriment. But I agree, the north side would not be acceptable. Any other comments? I'm wondering what are the. Huh. What are the restrictions for smoking laws near an entrance or an exit of a building? Is it 25 feet? I don't know. Like the Mr. Iowa Schrader Smoke 3 Yeah, I'm, I'm not real familiar with them. I, I'm aware that there are uh, establishments that have a smoking area that is connected to the building including a doorway through and they're allowed to smoke in those areas which which certainly aren't 25 feet right um so i assume that there's not a 25 foot setback requirement but yeah that's i'm not familiar with the um, smoke free act So I'm not certain if this is even a matter for this board at this time based on the new knowledge that we've gleaned. If it's if the issue at hand is now to replace the existing structure then the rules for getting a permit and the building materials and all of that, a site plan, maybe whatever, would be required, but it wouldn't be a variance, would it not? It's still a variance? That's Why straight. is it a variance? It would still be a variance because it would still be considered an expansion of a legal nonconforming use. They're expanding the footprint. The roofed area is still okay. part of the footprint of the building. Thank you. Okay. I think that's the aspect that has me most apprehensive, um, that it is illegal non-conforming. And I, I, I'm not a, a, I know that our, um, that our guest stated that she would be okay, uh, uh, you know, and rescind her opposition, but I'm not sure if she actually is compromising or rescinding. I, I, I'm not convinced that she would be happy with this change. However, I agree with exactly with what you just said, that they can still smoke of their own accord. Um, and I'm just curious if this solves that problem or not, uh, and if that even matters, really. Because really all we care about is, are we expanding the footprint of a building in an area that it should not be in? That's what I care about. And I, I'm personally opposed to expanding the footprint of a building that should not be there, as of now. Well, would it be better to somewhat confine them to an area as opposed to having it torn down and having them roam the whole parking lot? I don't know what they would do. I mean, well, if they're already walking around the building anyway, does this change anything? I'm guessing not. 
Well, if we're all speculating here, it seems like the structure will be more upgraded, will be upgraded versus what we, it looks like well, pallets is, or something that was created for this structure. Well, this will have to be demolished regardless. Yeah. So that won't be there. So I can't even use this example or this current picture as the future because it won't be there. So this eyesore will not be there because it has to be demolished regardless if this is approved or not. So it still doesn't change the, the, the core issue is that we're expanding the footprint of a building that should not be there. So, so essentially, hypothetically, the bar goes out of business, mm -hmm. another bar could not move in there. Is that correct? Because it's a legal non-conforming. This is Schrader with staff. That is not correct. A legal non-conforming use is allowed to continue, and if the existing business ceases operations, another uh, business that operates under the same use can go in there uh, as long as the use as an alcohol sales use does not cease for a period of more than three consecutive months. The legal non-conforming section uh, for most uses has a one year period, but for alcohol sales uses, it's a three month period. If a alcohol sales use that is a non-conforming use ceases operation as an alcohol sales use for three consecutive months or more, then it loses legal non-conforming status. But otherwise, if, if one ceases operation and it, it, another one uh, opens up within that three month period, it maintains the legal non-conforming status. I do have a question, another question. Was the, the way that you were proposed, that it was looked at, there was still going to be an opening to the, um, just as there is now there on the east side or if it would have gone on the north, there was still a way for people to walk in, walk out of the building and walk through the smoking area. Yes, Correct. and that would be required by fire code. They can't have it be completely enclosed with only an access point into the building. They have to have an access okay. point out, you know, to the outside, essentially, okay. by fire code. And this may be a question for the applicant, but I assume that's a tarp or something that would go over that during the summer months and during the winter it comes down is that why i mean the picture is obviously recent so or is that the way it looks year round i'll put some tarp before i'm hang up with wall it's Inspector is coming and told me it's not uh, safe from people right. down there. And That's what I was. Yeah, and I move this. I need some roof. Okay. <laughs> Any roof. All right, thank you. That okay. answers my question. Um, Any further questions? Yeah, I just glanced here at the application. And it says that. Is this correct that the applicant is only applying for an awning over the smoking area? Or, and then we have a, a conversation here about um, different <laughs> walls with vinyl siding. What is it? Should we table this until we know exactly what it is that yes. he wants done? Well, this is Western and staff. <clears throat> so I initially talked with Seth. Seth's interpretation of what was being re requested was an outdoor smoking area on the north side of the building that was going to be 20 by 9. Um, 20 by 20 got put in there because that information wasn't pr um, uh, privy to me prior to sending the request to the courier. So I just put 20 by 20 to make sure it's big enough to cover it. If it's smaller, that's fine. It just can't be bigger later on. And then when we get here today, it's 20 by 5. Um, so there, there's obviously been some miscommunication over the last two weeks as to exactly what's happening. Oh, and then now it's on the east side, not the north side. <clears throat> so again, should we table this until we have it right? Well, I think we've got it right. 
I mean, we're going to make it what we want it to be. Right. Okay. I don't know what the applicant could furnish us differently. He's given us a sketch, what he wants to build. It does say 20 by 5 on the sketch. So other than the materials that he wants to use, which we're going to require it to be, possibly require it to be changed, um, I think we have all the information. I don't see that it needs to be tabled. Let's move forward. Okay. Any other questions? If not, entertain a motion one way or the other. I move that we approve the application for a 20 by 5 smoking room addition with um, four... The fusion bar located at 1915 Borland Avenue that must be constructed on the east side of the building after the existing structure is removed and the exterior walls cannot be corrugated metal. They must be something more compatible with the um, the aesthetics are recommending something like horizontal vinyl siding. Okay, is there a second? You got a second to talk about it. No second? I can't second it. I'll second. Okay. Okay. Uh, obvious further discussion? Yeah. <laughs> My concern still remains the same. Expanding okay. the use of a non conforming building. Um, I know what it's like to have loud neighbors. I know what it's like to have to deal with cigarette smoke. Um, a little bit easier for someone, if there's an issue that she's having with her neighbors, for her to call the police and for them to see the issues. Uh, if that isn't present, because they're either inside or out. <laughs> so, well, the person who objected agreed that she would have no objections if it was built on the east side of the building. So, regardless of your feeling about it, her statement was that she would have no objection. It was. I just don't believe it. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 stick, I would still say no at this point. <laughs> I mean. To <clears throat> uh, I think she would have what she stated from what I heard is that she would have no objection with them upgrading the structure, correct? On the east side. Accurate. Anything? <laughs> I'll go back to my statement. I understand what you're saying about adding an addition on. Yeah. Okay. And I somewhat agree with that, but I also think that that a smoking area would need it is somewhat needed, and this would improve it because they all will be out there smoking no matter what. Yeah. Just may not be doing it in the rain, but so maybe that's the only time you're going to cut it back. But yeah. um, I think putting it in into a more aesthetic environment will help. The, somewhat help the area. That's my my thoughts. Okay. Is there any other, are there any other comments? I guess we'll call for a vote. <clears throat> All in well, favor? Wait, wait, one more comment. Yeah, one more comment. Okay. Yeah, it was just I'm starting to get in the, the teeter here. You're starting to what? I'm starting to get into the middle here. So I'm coming back from the So if we uh, allow this, we strongly believe that we would resolve the issue that the, the complainant is having. Um, I think the only way you resolve the issue of the complainant is if the bar went away. I, I'm not I saying that critical. Yeah, I'm just thinking that nothing's going to change. Right, and we're not law enforcement. We're not law enforcement. <laughs> uh, well, we can see if 
there's any nays. I think there will be, but we'll see. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. Just for clarification, it was three to two. It was approved on the east side of the building. With restrictions. Huh? With restrictions. With restrictions, yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't normally minutes. spend 35 minutes on one <laughs> item. But. Let's move it along. Okay, second request by Lincoln Savings Bank for a variance to allow for the placement of a 64 by 12 foot mobile office trailer on the existing site for a temporary period of two years located at 3254 <laughs> Kimball Avenue. Staff report. This is Western with staff. The applicant uh, proposed to place the 64 by 12 foot mobile office on the south side of the uh, bank building for a temporary period of two years. The property is zoned R4CZ conditional zoning district and has been zoned as such since September 7th, 2010. Uh, zoning area to the north, is, uh, immediately to the north is Bank Iowa Zone R4CZ Conditional Zoning District. To the south uh, is South Ridge Dental uh, Zone R4 Multiple Residence District. To the east is uh, our Single Family Homes uh, Zone R2 One and Two Family Residence District. And to the west is a mix of Single Family Homes and Multiple Family Residences Zone R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District, district and R3 Multiple Family Residence District. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area as the mobile office would uh, be set back 100 feet and mostly behind the dental office to the south and, is, um, and the office is screened from the residential uses to the west by detached garages. Uh, it would appear that the request would not have a negative impact upon traffic conditions in the surrounding area. Um, the applicant is requesting the variance due to operational growth that has occupied the entire facility at 3251 Kimball Avenue. The applicant is in need of additional conference room space and is requesting to place it on the south side of the building. The trailer would be 64 by 12 feet and include three conference rooms. The trailer would be temporary until March of 2021 when LSB, Lincoln Savings Bank, will relocate to the TechWorks building on Westfield Avenue. Mobile offices are not permitted, are not a permitted use anywhere within the city limits of Waterloo unless being used by contractors during a construction project. Uh, criteria, lack of reasonable return. There would not appear to be a lack of reasonable return. However, the request is temporary. Uh, uniqueness, there would appear to be a uniqueness to the request as the applicant is working to relocate to an adequate facility to accommodate their rapid growth Therefore, the request is temporary until they can complete renovation work needed to occupy the new site. Public considerations, there are no objections on file and the request is only temporary. Therefore, our staff recommends that the request by Lincoln Savings Bank for a variance to allow for the placement of a 64 foot by 12 foot mobile office trailer on the existing site for a temporary period of two years located at 3254 Kimball Avenue be approved for the following reasons. There would not appear to be a not appear to be a lack of reasonable return. However, the request is temporary. There would appear to be a uniqueness to the request as the applicant is working to relocate to an adequate facility to accommodate their rapid growth. Therefore, the request uh, is temporary. And there are no objections on file. Any questions of staff? So this would be placed in the yard? Looks like it. <clears throat> On the south side of the building there between the dental office and the bank building. So here's a site, that site plan here. So it would be that long rectangle there. And that red circle is a tree that they removed to make room for it. Does anybody here wish to speak in favor of the request? Hi, I'm Andrea DeVore from Lincoln Savings Bank. Um, we are experiencing considerable growth. We have a plan in place to relocate our operations 
to the TechWorks building um, during construction. Obviously, we are at our capacity there and need additional conference room space. We won't have permanent employees in the trailer. It would strictly just be used for conference room space. It won't be attached in any way? It's not attached, and it is temporary. Okay. Anybody else wish to speak in favor of the request? Anybody wish to speak against the request? Any further comments or questions from board? I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the request by Lincoln Savings Bank for a temporary variance to allow for the placement of a 64 foot by 12 foot mobile office trailer on the existing site for a temporary period of two years located at 3254 Kimball Avenue for the following reasons. Number one, there would not appear to be a lack of reasonable return. However, the request is temporary. Number two, there would appear to be a uniqueness to the request as the applicant is working to relocate to an adequate facility to accommodate their rapid growth. Therefore, the request is temporary. Number three, there are no objections on file. And number four, that the trailer is removed once they are moved from that site to their new site. I'll second it. Okay. Any further questions or comments? I'm going to abstain from this one. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Okay, our three requests by Helen Engineering on behalf of Matt and Andrea McGue for a variance to allow for the splitting of existing property to allow for a setback of 10 feet from the proposed property line to the base of an existing cellular tower, 50 feet less than the required 60 foot minimum setback for a cell tower located at 1150 Home Park Boulevard. Staff report. This is Dornoff with staff. The applicants are requesting a variance to the requirement that a lot line be a minimum 60 feet from a cell tower in order to split a lot and sell and sell the split off lot for development of a multi-family housing building um, the property is located at 1150 home park boulevard in zone c1 commercial district has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance the request to allow the variance for the proposed lot would be not appear to have a negative impact on the neighborhood the primary purpose of the setback requirement is to ensure the cell tower is not built too close to adjoining properties. However, the tower is existing and the purchaser of the lot and the developer of the apartment complex would have full knowledge of and understanding of how close the tower is. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the surrounding area. The request would be in conformance with the classification of this area as mixed commercial, medium to high density residential, professional office, compatible commercial and future on the future land use map within the city of Waterloo. The section of the zoning ordinance pertains to this request, Chapter 27, Special Provisions, Exceptions and Modifications, 10-27-5D3, Setbacks from the Base Structure, the Minimum Distance from the Base Structure or any guy anchors and the property line shall be fit a minimum of 50% of the antenna height or a minimum of 60 feet. The applicant is requesting a variance to the minimum property line 60 feet in order to split the lot that is currently has a multifamily complex in order to sell the newly created lot and construct another multifamily building there is no regulation on the distance of the tower to multifamily complex just a setback requirement to the property line the owner of the tower us cellular was contacted in order to get feedback on the request however staff has not heard back from them um let Criteria lack of reasonable return. There would not there would appear to be a lack of reasonable return as a multifamily building could not be constructed on the property if the split onto another lot without the variance. Uniqueness, there would appear to be uniqueness to the request as splitting the lot will create an infill lot for development that has been sitting empty for many years. Staff is aware of no opposition to the request. 
Three, public consideration. Approval of the lot line variance would not have a negative impact on the neighborhood. Therefore, staff recommends the variance to allow for the splitting of an existing property to allow for a setback of 10 foot from, a proposed, of, from the proposed property line to the base of an existing cell tower, 50 feet less than the required 60 foot minimum setback for a cell tower be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact around the area. The variance would create a developable lot. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the neighborhood. Questions of staff? I have one. The U.S. Cellular was contacted but has not responded. If they responded, is there some way that they could object or do we know anything about what their position would be? And would it matter? Mr. Schrader with staff. Um, I think if they had concerns, it would probably be um, on whether or not it would impact them from like a um, rebuild status of their tower or potentially if they had some sort of safety concern for the proximity. Although um, the zoning ordinance does not have a setback requirement from the tower to a building, just a tower to the property line and the existing building on the property is um, well less than you know a 60 foot setback requirement and the proposed building would probably be um, 35 40 feet uh, to the tower but it would just it's 10 feet to the property line itself so um, it, it's a little hard to say but yeah we, we did try and reach out to them um, but got no response so okay. okay thank you just a clarification the cell tower is going to be on the new split lot correct uh, Schrader with staff no the cell tower will be on the lot to the south okay. that has the existing apartment complex on this would create a new vacant lot on the uh, north side of the property that they're then looking at uh, building a apartment complex <clears throat> on in the future. Okay. <clears throat> Further questions? How will the cell tower be accessed by U.S. Cellular for improvements or maintenance or things that they have to do there? To start off staff, they have an easement on the east side of the property. Through the parking lot. Yeah, through the park. Oh, is this a little driveway right here? Yeah. Oh, I get it. Okay. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak in favor of the request? Good evening. Uh, Kyle Helen, Helen Engineering Surveying here representing uh, Matt and Andrea. Uh, I just did want to point out on the uh, concept drawing, uh, you can see the cell tower is 10 feet from the property line. And then we're going to follow uh, the zoning setback requirement for the rear yard, which would be 35 feet. So the building itself would be 45 feet uh, from the base of the tower. Um, if you go back in your packet and you look at the aerial, you'll see a 12plex that is to the south of the cell tower that's on the primary uh, property right now. Uh, the north edge of that building is approximately 45 feet from the base of the cell tower. So we're not going to be any closer than the existing structure that's there. Um, if you have any other questions, I can certainly answer those. Thank you. Just a quick question. Uh, the uh, drawing here kind of indicates there's going to, is there going to be an easement from this proposed lot to the cell tower? There is an existing easement right now. Uh, if you look at that concept drawing, the dashed lines that come off of 3rd Street south and then kind of take a 45 degree angle into the so easterly edge, uh, that's an existing easement now. We may request from U.S. Cellular to just move that easement over slightly so it actually travels the center path of the proposed parking lot. Okay. What was there first, the tower or the existing 12plex? Um, 
I think the tower was built in 2001 or 2002, and I think the building was built shortly after that. The zoning that came along was 2010. Oh. That defined uh, anything relative to the base of the tower. Are you the owner of the existing 12plex? No, I am not. Okay. And the new structure is also going to be a 12plex? Uh, it's probably going to be less than that because we have to meet minimum standards for parking stalls. So we're leaning more towards an eightplex, but that we're in the concept plan. You know, the first things first is to, to get the parcel approved. Okay. So we know what, what, how much area we have to work with. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody wish to speak against the request? Hearing none. Um, Mr. Chair, before you do that, I'm going to recuse myself from this uh, because of my relationship with Matt McGill. And I, I plan on recusing myself as well. I can make the motion. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I move that the variance to allow for the splitting of the existing property to allow for a setback of 10 feet from the proposed property line to the base of an existing cellular tower, 50 feet less than the required 60 foot minimum setback for a cellular tower be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact upon the surrounding area. The variance would create a developable lot. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the neighborhood. Second. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Okay, our fourth request is a request by Cedar Valley Orthopedic Surgery <coughs> for a variance to the R4 RP plan residence district sign regulations to allow for the installation of a 63 square foot monument sign, 126.75 square feet wall sign a two by four, eight square foot sign for a total of 197.802 square feet of signage, 133.802 square feet more than the maximum of 64 feet allowed in an R4 RP plan residential district located at 1631 Logan Avenue. Staff report. This is Western the staff. The property is zoned R4RP Plan Residence District and is located at 1631 Logan Avenue and has been zoned as such since November 19th of 2018. Uh, to the north, uh, there are single family homes. Uh, the area is zoned R2, one and two family residence district. Immediately to the south is Carver Intermediate School, zone R2, one and two family residence district. Immediately to the east are single-family homes. The area is zoned R2, one and two family residence district. And to the west is St. Paul's United Methodist Church, zone R2, one and two family residence district. The property in, uh, in question is accessed from Louise Street, which is classified as a local street. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The proposed signs would be in conformance with the classification of this area as mixed residential, low, medium, high residential, professional offices, and neighborhood commercial on the future land use map within the City of Waterloo Comprehensive Plan adopted February 3rd, 2003. However, medical officers are permitted use, are a permitted use in the R4RP Plan Residential District. The Cedar Valley uh, Orthopedic Surgery Center is unique in that it is located in an R4RP residence district, which limits the property to 64 square feet of signage, but is a commercial use along a principal ar arterial highway on a corner lot. The 64 square foot limit would not appear adequate to properly advertise the building and provide enough directional signage to adequately label its building and the medical services it provides. If the building were zoned commercial, no variance for this project would be required. There have recently been multiple variances granted for signage under the R3, R4 sign regulations, which the R4 RP falls under the R3, R4 sign regulations. The staff is going to review the sign regulations and propose amendments, but it would likely be several months before such an amendment could be finalized criteria and lack of reasonable return. 
there appears to be a lack of reasonable return as the R4RP zoning designation, which limits the square footage of signage allowed to 64 square feet, severely limits the ability of the development to provide adequate signage that is needed for the Cedar Valley Orthopedic Surgery Center owners, employees, patients, and visitors. Uniqueness, there would appear to be some uniqueness to the request as the Cedar Valley Orthopedic Surgery Center is located in an R4RP residence district, which limits the property 64 square feet of signage, but is a commercial use along a principal arterial highway on a corner lot. The 64 square foot would limit, would not appear adequate to properly advertise the building and provide enough directional signage to adequately label its building and the medical services that it provides. The building, uh, if the building was owned commercial, no variance for this project would be required. Public considerations, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area, but would be compatible with surrounding uses. Staff has heard no objections to the request. Therefore, staff recommends approval of the request by Cedar Valley Orthopedic Surgery Center for a variance to the sign regulations to allow for the installation of a 63 square foot monument sign. That's 126.75 square foot wall sign, a two foot by four foot, eight square foot sign for a total of 197.75 square foot of signs 133.75 square feet more than the maximum of 64 square feet allowed in an R4RP plan residence district located at 1631 Logan Avenue be approved for the following reasons. There appears to be a lack of reasonable return as the R4RP zoning designation limits the square footage of signage allowed to 64 square feet, which severely limits the ability for the development to provide the adequate signage that is needed for Cedar Valley Orthopedic Surgery Center owners, employees, patients, and visitors. Number two, there would appear to be some uniqueness to the request as the R4RP sign regulations limit signage to only 64 square feet, and this prevents the signage needed to effectively direct clients to their business, business and the services they provide. Number three, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area and would be compatible with surrounding uses. And number four, staff has heard no objections to the request. Any questions or comments? I have one. The, and I don't know how relevant, but this depiction of the sign says it's unlighted, but then when we have these petitions for approval that were um, given to the people that they needed to get some sign-offs, it says that the sign will be, the letters will be lighted on the sign. And I'll... I would suggest the applicant explain that in detail for us when you get ready. Okay. Perhaps we're talking. Hmm? The sign you're talking about is the one that's going to go near the street the directional sign versus the, the one here on the left i think so okay okay is there anybody in the audience who would speak in favor of the request <coughs> hi i'm uh, tom gorshi i'm one of the three orthopedic surgeons that uh, built this building when the building was designed, the uh, lettering, lettering on the front of the uh, building is part of, the, part of the aesthetics, and I think that if we can't put the lettering on the building, it'll change the looks of it. The building sits back about 200 feet, and without any identifying um, name on the building, it could be kind of confusing on what is back there. This building is built on school, from property that we bought from the school. Behind this building is the driveway for the school buses, a parking lot for the school and a basketball court. And so then this building possibly could be confused as part of the school. Um, and so I think it's important that we be able to put signage up on the building. I did go around to the uh, neighboring people to have them sign a petition. One house was boarded up. Three people did answer the door and all three signed the petition and didn't have uh, uh, any objection to it. And, and we did want to um, light the signage on the building in addition to the monument sign. The uh, lighting would go off at midnight 
it would come on at, uh, it, it's set on a uh, astral clock, so it would come on um, uh, during uh, uh, sunup, half hour before sunup, and it would come on six o'clock at night and go off at midnight, just like the um, uh, parking lot lights in our parking lot in that building. How would the letters be lit? Would it be lights that shine up onto it? No, it would be behind it. Behind it, okay. Back, yes. back, so lit. back lit. Back lit, okay. As long as we're talking signage, just for clarification, uh, the sign you were just talking about is mounted on the building itself, correct? The lettering on the building would be mounted on the building. And then you have two other signs, one near the intersection of Logan and, and Louise, Louise, and another one off of Louise yes, that are freestanding, non-lit. The, the one for the driveway where you pull into our building will be non-lit, and it's that two-by-four sign. The one near Logan and Louise? Would be lit. Would be lit. Yes. Uh, but again, backlit or with a light shining on it? Backlit. Dave? Um, Dave Schechterly from Signs and Designs. Yes, it is backlit. It is a backlit monument sign, but um, it is met, made with a metal face so that only the letters and the logo will light up. Okay. Okay. That way it, te it tends to diminish the, the lighted footprint that it's creating. Mm -hmm by only lighting up the letters in the logo. Okay. Uh, Eric Schrader, uh, so that would require a variance to the lighting as well. Staff would recommend approval of that variance, but the wording in the ordinance for the R3 and the R4 residential district, which this site zone um, RP, but the RP gets its signs from the R3, R4 section, and the lighting section says uh, that they shall not be illuminated unless constructed with opaque uh, background and translucent lettering. Um, so that's where you've got the lettering itself is designed with a material that actually lets some light through the lettering. Um, this is different than that, but it is, I think, an acceptable and reasonable lighting approach that's not... A, a, a real intrusive it, it's it's it just kind of creates a, a halo effect around the lighting essentially so but it it, it is not technically per that code like it's we mentioned in the staff report we will be taking a look at amendments to this code we've had a rash of uh, variances both to lighting issues and size issues mm -hmm. in the uh, r3 and r4 uh, provisions, so we will be looking at doing an overhaul to that. But yeah, that's not going to be an a, an overnight thing by by any means. Yeah. Is there anybody in the audience wish to speak against the request? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. okay. Um. So I'll make a motion to approve the request by Cedar Valley Orthopedic Surgery for a variance to the sign regulations to allow for the installation of a 63 square foot monument sign, 126.75 feet wall sign, a two by four, eight, foot square, eight square foot sign for a total of 197.75 square feet of signage, 133.75 square feet more than a maximum of 64 square feet allowed in an R4 RP planned residence district located at 1631 Logan Avenue be approved for the following reasons. There appears to be a lack of, lack of reasonable return as the R4 RP zoning designation limits in the square footage of signage allowed to 64 square feet, which severely limits the ability for the development to provide adequate signage that is needed for the Cedar Valley Orthopedic Surgery Center owners, employees, patients, and visitors. Number two, there would appear to be some uniqueness to the request as the R4 RP sign regulations limit signage only to 64 square feet, and this prevents the signage needed to be effectively, effectively direct clients to their business and the services that they provide. 
Number three, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area and would be compatible with the surrounding uses. And number four, staff has heard no objections to the request. Do we need to add something in there about the, the lighting thing? Yeah. I'm not sure how, uh, the, yeah. what I the- I think maybe the adding um, 63 foot lighted oh, monument yes. sign would cover what Mr. Schrader added. Yeah. Would it? No? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, just said light. so number five, the installation of the 63 square foot lighted monument sign. And it's not just the 63, it's the two by four, right? No. The other one? It's <laughs> three. And the wall sign. The wall, and the wall, the wall sign. sign. Yeah. There. And <laughs> the 126.75 lighted wall sign. Yep. Correct? Yep. Yes. Second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any comments, questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Request number five. Request by Ronald Lewis for a variance to the R2, 1, and 2 family residence district. Accessory structure regulations allow for the construction of a new detached garage to have a setback six to seven feet, three point, is it 6.7 feet? Okay. Six, six foot seven inches. Okay. Well, there was a spot in the thing that said six or seven. <clears> two. Oh. Okay. So that's why I was confused. Okay. Setback 6.7, 3.3 feet less than the required side yard setback of 10 feet on a corner lot located at 139 Lewis Street. Staff report. This is Western staff. Uh, the property is located on Lewis Street, uh, which sees minimal traffic. The site in question is on R2, 1 and 2 Family Residence District and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the ordinance. Uh, to the north um, is the UP Railroad line. Uh, to the south are residential homes zoned R2, 1 and 2 Family Residence District. To the e immediately to the east are single family homes zoned R2, 1 and 2 Family Residence District. Uh, to the west are single family homes zoned R2, 1 and 2 Family Residence District. Uh, the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area as the proposed location of the garage is on Lewis Street, which sees minimal traffic, um, abuts a railroad line, and would have limited visibility from surrounding neighbors. Uh, the request would not have appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area as the garage would be constructed on the north side of the property, abutting railroad property. Uh, the applicant demolished an existing detached garage in 2016 and recently hired a contractor to pour a new concrete pad for a future 20 foot, 24 foot by 24 foot square foot uh, detached garage. However, the contractor appears to have assumed that the new garage could be placed in the same location as the previous one built in 1939 prior to the adoption of the ordinance. When a second contractor attempted to pull a bu building permit, uh, to build the garage, staff informed them that there is a 10-foot minimum side yard setback required. The ordinance requires that for corner lots where the home faces the longer dimension street frontage that the side yard along the longer dimension street frontage be a minimum of 10 feet from the property line. Um, we have a list of similar requests that have been approved over the years. I won't read all those if you don't want me to. Criteria, uh, lack of reasonable return. There would not appear to be a lack of reasonable return to the request as the applicant could pour a new slab in a location that meets the minimum side yard setback. Uniqueness, uh, there would appear to be a uniqueness to the request as there is or as there was an existing detached garage that did did not meet the side yard setback that existed from 1931 to 2016 without any known negative effects on the area. Public considerations, approval of the variance could set precedence for other properties within the nearby area to have side yard setbacks within the R2 residence district of less than 10 feet on a corner lot. However, there are no known negative impacts with the previous non-conforming garage that has existed uh, since 1939 to 2016. <coughs> 
and also staff has received no objections to the request. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Ronald Lewis for a variance to the R2 1 and 2 family oh. residence <coughs> district or Brinkley. Ronald Brinkley. Slow down. For a variance to the R2 1 and 2 family residence district. Uh, accessory structure regulations to allow for the construction of a new attached garage to have a setback of six foot seven inches, three foot three inches, three three foot three inches less than the required side yard setback of ten feet on a corner lot located at 139 Lewis Street be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact upon the area as a proposed location of the of the Lewis Street has a very little traffic. The proposed garage abuts a railroad line and would have limited visibility from surrounding neighbors. And there have been no objections to the request. Okay, just have one comment just on that, <coughs> on that aerial view there. You've got the wrong house indicated. Yeah, yeah. It, we adjusted it and sometimes they move. <coughs> and, How it moves. And it's yeah, not 1631 it Logan Avenue either. So. Right. So I assume it's the immediate house to the north then. The very last house on the corner. Okay. Also, real quickly, uh, in your documents, it states that it abuts the railroad property. That's all right. I, I drove by, and there's Railroad Avenue between. <coughs> the proposed structure mm -hmm. and the railroad property. So yeah. technically per it perhaps that word's a little bit of a abut. stretch. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to clarify that. There is a distance between the railroad and this property. You're correct. Okay. Okay. Does anybody wish to speak in favor of the request? Uh, I am Ron Brinkley, not Ron Lewis, um, <laughs> and I'm I'm the property owner. Uh, but the only thing I would like to add is that from the front edge of the the current pad, it's a full 25 feet to Railroad Avenue to the edge of the road, and. Um, I, I have a question. Wouldn't most concrete contractors have to know about this? Or, is, I mean, how could something like this happen? And, you know. Well, one of the things as staff, uh, myself personally, when there's a garage that's uh, going to be built, I typically ask that they pull all permits at once because pull a permit for the entire garage because you are now required to pull a permit to pour concrete on your property. So that's how you can miss, that's one way you can miss uh, okay. not having it reviewed, whether or not you put in the concrete in the right, right okay. place. Because they're not required to talk to us just to pour some that. Well, I had actually come down to try to pull the permit when before the pad was poured, and whoever I talked to said that typically the, the concrete or the garage builder is the one that pulls the, the correct the permit, mm -hmm. not not the guy that does the concrete. But and so I you know I left it at that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's one question. Uh, this this garage is exactly the same size as your old garage, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is anybody here wish to speak against the request? In none, I would uh, entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the request by Richard, I'm sorry, by <laughs> Ronald Brinkley Poor for guy. a variance to the R2 right one and two family residence district accessory structure regulations to allow for the construction of a new detached garage to have a setback of six foot seven inches three foot three inches less than the required side yard setback of 10 feet on a corner lot located at 139 Lewis Street for the following reasons. Number one, the request would not 
appear to have a negative impact upon the area as the proposed location of the Lewis of Lewis Street has very little traffic. Number two, the proposed garage is near <laughs> the railroad line and would have limited visibility from surrounding neighbors. And number three, there have been no objections to the request. I'll second it. Would you like to amend it and just add it that it's putting it right back in the same spot for future consideration of any? Yeah. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> so you need, I need a second on them. I'll second it. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Make up something. <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. You, you know what I meant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. It's passed. You can go ahead and build your garage. Thank you, Richard Lewis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you just did that to make me feel better, right? Right. right. <laughs> okay. We request number six by New Star for a variance to the setback requirements. <laughs> A 600 feet from a protected use and 250 feet from another another non-limited alcohol sales used to convert an existing limited alcohol sales unit to a non-limited alcohol sales use at 315 Fletcher Avenue. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. To a non-limited. Oh, non-limited. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Staff report. Okay, yes, the uh, applicant is requesting a variance to the 600-foot setback requirement from protected use and 250-foot setback requirement from another non-limited alcohol sales use to convert an existing limited alcohol sales use to a non-limited alcohol sales use at 315 Fletcher Avenue, located 87 feet from the, the nearest protected use and 134 feet from another non-limited alcohol sales use. Property is located at 315 Fletcher Avenue. Um, the site is owned S1 Shopping Center and has been since April 12, 1976. Uh, surrounding land uses um, are to the north, Highway 63, Sergeant Trail, vacant land, zoned R2 and A1. Uh, to the south, commercial business, zoned S1 Shopping District. Uh, to the east, commercial businesses and residential, zoned S1 Shopping District and R3 Multiple Residence District. And to the west, commercial businesses, zoned S1 Shopping District. The request uh, could have a negative impact on the surrounding area, the intent of the limited alcohol sales use designations and restrictions on the non-limited uh, alcohol sales use is to avoid <laughs> non-limited alcohol sales uses, uh, liquor stores and bars that may make a majority of their business from selling alcohol near residential areas and avoid having an over-concentration of non-limited alcohol uses. The request would not appear to have any negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. The proposed request would be in conformance with the classification of this area as uh, commercial in the future land use map. Um, the, the purpose of the non-limited alcohol sales restriction is to avoid having non-limited alcohol sales uses near residential areas and avoid having over-concentration of non-limited alcohol sales uses. Uh, this is done in order to uh, limit the secondary effects of certain alcohol sales uses to prevent and protect neighborhoods from deterioration and loss of property value to incompatible uses and otherwise to promote the general purpose of the zoning ordinance to promote the health, safety, welfare, and morals of the community. Should also be noted that the applicant has a legal signage by having a sign that references liquor. Sites that are limited alcohol sales use off-premise consumption are prohibitive from having signs that contain the words liquor, alcohol, beer or wine, or any variant synonym of such words. If the variance to become a non-limited alcohol sales use is not approved, the applicant will have to remove the out of compliance sign. The site in question at 315 Fletcher Avenue is located less than 600 feet from uh, many protected uses, including the residential condo units at 656 Summit Avenue, which is located approximately 87 feet from the property in question. The site is located less than 250 feet from a non-limited alcohol sales use, as the Wedge Bar is located at 341-345 Fletcher Avenue, which is located approximately 134 feet from the property in question. The property in question is located across the street from Quickstar at 324 Fletcher Avenue, which is also a limited alcohol sales use that complies with all requirements as a limited alcohol sales use. 
uh, for the criteria, lack of reasonable return. There does not appear to be a lack of reasonable return to the request as the location can still continue to operate as a limited alcohol sales use business. Uniqueness. There does not appear to be uniqueness to the request as the applicant can still sell alcohol with a limited alcohol sales use designation. Public considerations. Approval of the request would appear to have a negative impact in the neighborhood by having an overconcentration of non-limited alcohol sales uses and allowing a non-limited alcohol sales use in close proximity to protected uses. Staff therefore recommends that the request for a variance to the 600 setback requirement from a protected use and 250 foot setback requirement from another non-limited sales use use to convert an existing limited alcohol sales use to non-limited alcohol sales use at 315 Fletcher and Avenue be denied for the following reasons. The request would appear to have a negative impact on the area by allowing a non-limited alcohol sales use in close proximity to protected uses. Uh, the request could allow for an over-concentration of non-limited alcohol sales uses. I have a question in regards to <clears throat> non-limited alcohol sales. So that is any bar, is that what you're saying? Um, uh, basically, a, a non-limited would be like a, a, a bar or, or liquor store, uh, or a, because you could be a, a restaurant and have an alcohol license, and it would be limited as well. Um, but, but basically, it'd be pretty much a straight bar. But a bar can't sell, uh, can't do takeout bottles, correct? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I guess I'm not quite okay, so. They can have takeout beer, but they can't have bottles. Is that correct? Mr. Schrader <laughs> staff, that is my understanding. Yes, uh, that'd be the difference between the Class E liquor license versus a different classification. But okay. uh, per the the city's classification is non limited versus limited. It then further breaks it down between non limited on premise consumption, non limited off premise consumption. <coughs> But the uh, 250 foot setback requirement from any other non limited is regardless of whether it's on premise or off premise consumption license. So that would be, that's just in an R district. Is, is that, or no, the, what district is this again? This is zoned S1 shopping center district. <coughs> the, so no, downtown the, would be different? Yes, this, the downtown is zoned C3 commercial district, and the C3 commercial district uh, is um, the uh, basically the only zoning district that does not have um, alcohol restrictions on like setbacks or. Okay. Um, so the like one um, for an example on Fifth Street. Across from S and S, that there was a bar there in the corner, which is ceased, but then there was a liquor store on the other end. That would have been in compliance. Was that 250 feet away there? I'm not too sure exactly which ones you're referring to, but I think maybe you're referring to the one on on Fifth Street that's called uh, West Side Liquor, uh, and. So you've got a, a lot of alcohol uses that became legal non-conforming uses when the city uh, amended the restrictions back in some restrictions in 2007, some more in 2009, and some further amendments in 2011. Uh, there was also, uh, with those amendments, that was the first time there was a classification system and a requirement to be determined between whether you were non-limited or limited. And one of the provisions that the ordinance did um, was require that the um, that basically uses be deemed a limited alcohol sales use unless the uh, property owner or business owner could document by you know sales documentation that they were a non-limited alcohol sales use. So if, if I'm thinking of the establishment you're talking about on West 5th Street, that's actually classified as a limited alcohol sales use, i.e. a convenience store. No, there was a bar right on the corner. It's been closed for a while now. I think it was that one that was originally Lighthouse. Hmm? No, 929. 929. 929. Yeah, that one 
more than likely was classified as a non-limited bar and was probably grandfathered in as such because okay. it certainly would be less than uh, 600 feet to protected uses. Well, a, a bar doesn't have to be the 600 feet, but it would have been less than uh, 250 feet to another non-limited use. Just clarifying myself from a thought process here, that yeah. since it's been closed for more than three months, it couldn't come back in there as a bar. Not without going through the special permit and variance okay. process. All right. Um, the other question I have is um, the exist the signs have been put up. Um, the one on the corner, this pole sign, that's been there for a while, hasn't it? Yep. Looks like the building sign is new. Yes. How did they get a permit to put a sign up if it was illegal? Uh, so a building a building permit or sign permit was I mean a issued. Sign permit. Yeah, a sign permit was issued for the sign recently put up on the building, uh, but on the condition that it uh, not have any of the letters that are in violation of the ordinance. Uh, the sign contractor approached the city to get the permit showing a sign that was not in compliance. They were advised that they could not put up a sign of that nature. They requested to then obtain the sign permit with a sign that would not use that lettering, and the sign was installed with that lettering. Okay. So does the pole sign have to uh, come out as well? The pole sign, it, if uh, a variance is not granted, and um, uh, the pole sign will have to come out as well. The pole sign does predate the changes, but the ordinance that was passed in 2009 actually uh, provided for no grandfathering or a legal nonconforming status as it's provided and specifically required that all um, existing signs that uh, on for limited alcohol sales uses that don't comply with the requirement had to be brought into compliance. That ordinance did provide a grace period until 2013, from 2009 when it was passed till 2013. Uh, obviously, we are now past that grace period as well, but the city has just kind of been um, casually trying to you know, work with sites to bring them into compliance for the existing signs. Um, we haven't been real actively forcing sign uh, changes unless there are some sort of other approval processes that have been involved with the request so and probably not necessarily for this group but the issues with the siding has that been resolved uh, the issues with the siding have not been resolved yet but we have been working with the business owner uh, on that issue it did go before the planning and zoning commission um, it has not gone to the city council yet uh, it may actually end up going back to the planning and zoning commissions for some further review before it then goes to the city council then will we get it then the, the, the siding part does not come to the board of adjustment that's a it's a site plan amendment to the s1 shopping district which a site plan okay. amendment goes to the planning commission for recommendation and council for approval okay. the variance on the other hand is what comes to the board okay any other questions okay is there someone in the audience who wish to speak in favor of the request My name is Shai I'm for uh, 315 Fletcher Avenue. The reason um, you probably saw that store is changed, the look is changed, and uh, I asked for a variant sign to let the people know I do have that uh, liquor thing in there. I know they explain um, very big things over here, maybe some of them are over my head. All I was asking to advertise only, not to generate, like they said, it's going to put the neg negative impact for the neighborhood. Majority of those, those bar, the people sit there and drink it. To when they come to us to buy the liquor, they take it and they go home and drink them. So 
I don't know what kind of negative impact the zoning department was talking about. And across the street at the Quick Star, they sell more beer than us. And uh, I think if they're not creating any ne kind of negative impact on the people, so I think we probably be not doing the negative impact on them. <coughs> All I'm asking, because this is a new business, people does not know what, what's going on in this building. Like the uh, other day I was on my store and uh, somebody walks in and asks me, is, it, is that a, still a phone store? So I need sign to put over there to tell them I, this is what I am. To not to generate the revenue for the liquor, not to do anything. I even talked to a ready to work with the zoning department. If they give me a permission, at least for five years, to advertise that liquor thing on, a change to my uh, license to the non-limited, limited to. If uh, business come on on track, I go back to the non-limited. The mostly I'm trying to do to advertise it, to generate some revenue. I mean, right now, not too many people are aware of that store is still open and it's a liquor store. Or, and I don't want to have an impression for the liquor store. We are, um, the convenience store, this is my title right now. So I would like to have that title, but try to let the people know I do have these product as well. If I put that, like if you show me the sign again, if we take the liquor sign off, it's gonna say tobacco and the vape shop. The mostly the people are gonna think we are the vape shop and tobacco shop. The people who try to buy the beer and alcohol from me, they probably not come back to me because they probably think this is a new building. They they are the vape shop now. So that's how I'm gonna lose my other business for those stuff. So my Right now, I'm asking for the variant sign to advertise it, not to generate or create a problem. <clears throat> I put a ne negative, I mean, negative impact, what they were talking about. Thank okay. you. Can I, the sign isn't necessarily the major thing here. We're mostly being asked whether you can actually sell liquor. You wear that? Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. Yes, no, right? This is Schrader with staff. It's not whether or not he can sell liquor. It's the amount of alcohol, um, whether it's non-limited versus limited. So the site is currently uh, a limited alcohol sales use. Um, so the variance as submitted was to change from a limited alcohol sales use to non-limited alcohol sales use. The other um, option that he's talking about would potentially be to not change the status, um, keep it as a limited alcohol sales use, but just grant a variance to uh, allow the signage that does not comply with the requirements of the ordinance. A limited alcohol sales does a lot of liquor? A limited alcohol sales use can sell liquor. Uh, that There has been a lot of discussion and debate about that. Um, there has been, um, as part of the amendments, um, there was some discussion of whether or not uh, the limited alcohol sales use should be precluded from being under that classification if they had a Class E liquor license, but it was not decided to amend the ordinance in that way. It was decided to base it on um, percent sales, so you can have a limited alcohol sales use, such as a convenience store that can have a class E liquor license, such as this facility right here, that have to maintain certain sales requirements, both in percentage of sales and floor space. There's percentage uh, limits for overall alcohol sales, percentage limit for hard liquor sales, and then the percentage of floor space that the alcohol can take up to qualify as a limited alcohol sales use. So to go back a few years when we were talking about the one on Broadway, 
Um, was that just because the whole area had been designated and no new permits? Is that why we? Yeah, so broad. The- yeah, so the city also has three overlay districts, alcohol overlay districts, that have even more stringent alcohol sales regulations. And Broadway is one of the three overlay districts. Um, and uh, yeah, you, basically that one precludes any new liquor store or convenience store or uh, uh, any new limited alcohol sales use with the exceptions of a grocery store of over 10,000 or maybe I think it was it used to be 10,000 and they might have changed it to either 15 or 20,000 square feet but a grocery store of a certain size or a pharmacy are the only exceptions for a limited alcohol sales use in an overlay district so I'm I'm obviously confused then. So if he stays with the non-limited alcohol sales. Well, he's limited now. So, so if he doesn't ask for to convert to a limited alcohol sales, unlimited. Exist, I'm, I'm confused. Because if you get the unlimited one, so you can have a variant sign outside. Yeah. So a non-limited alcohol sales use has no sign restrictions a oh. limited alcohol sales use has sign restrictions so asking for a variance to switch from limited to non-limited has the effect of number one eliminating any sales percentage requirements but but also number two eliminating any restrictions on your signage okay so if we leave it as it is if we i'm sorry if we allow it to go to a non-limited then he could be change his whole business plan if we leave it the way it is then the only thing we're asking he's we're proving is the signage is that correct that would be an option and and he certainly asked the applicant but i think he's okay with that option if you were to remain a limited alcohol sales use but just be granted a variance for the signage correct right so advertising but so to we, clarify or to just make sure it's understood staff is still recommending denial i was wondering about that. is it even in a limited even if it remains a limited but just has a, a variance to the signage our concern is is the precedence it's a limited alcohol sales use there are lots of limited alcohol sales use that are all going to also want to have signage but their their reputation is different than mine you done so if again if we did a not if we approved a non-limited alcohol sales special permit or variance then it doesn't matter what the sign says okay and he could increase the amount of alcohol he has for sale in that location if we switch him to the other okay so as far as limited alcohol sales is what he's doing now and we all we'd be doing is a word to change but yeah i guess it, you're setting a precedence yeah okay i personally hate to run a business out of an, uh, can i ask a question yeah sir there was a fire in this building uh a while back were you the owner of the building at that time yes sir what type of business was in that building uh, prior to the fire same type of business so nothing has changed in terms of what kind of business you're doing in that building yes sir uh, only the change was the time we were closed and the look of the building okay so so people are aware if you will no they're mostly familiar people. with the location that you were doing business as you are doing now no, because uh, now the question concerned because buildings ra- rise differently and uh, some people still have a concern about what are we really. Okay, thank you.
the existing sign on the corner, hasn't that been there for years with that liquor mm -mm. on it? Mm -mm. Yeah, it's been there for ages. Like even yeah. we bought it before it was signed there. But this is a new one that says liquor, tobacco, and vape shop, correct? No. That pole sign has the been there. The pole has no been there, time. but the insert is different, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it's different. What did it used to say? It didn't say vaping. So it just said liquor. It didn't it always say liquor? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Did it always say liquor? I believe so, yes. Okay. It seems like the pole sign on the side. This one on the side, I mean, I think the south side, there was always been, we had a sign. The but south did it side, say we used to be have it on top, and the pole sign, it was always been there. Did it say liquor? Yeah. Okay. The it wasn't the New liquor, Star but Liquors, the new sign wasn't that, that have, the name of it? Yes, New Star Liquor. I believe okay. that's correct. Okay. So, if it's been that way for years, why did the city not do something about it before? Well, it sounds like he, they he, said that they have, haven't been aggressively making changes, but changes need to be made. Yeah, yeah. straight to staffs, yeah. So 2009 is when the amendment was done that limited signage for limited alcohol sales use. And it was there before? It was there before. Okay. That 2009 ordinance specifically precluded grandfather status is commonly how it's referred to as legal non-conforming and specifically provided for a grace period for existing signs to be brought into compliance i'm sorry and I yes that part. yeah we are now well outside of that stated grace period of the ordinance but yes the city has been very gingerly going after businesses to force them into compliance understanding that they had a sign there before then. So we've tried to have been very gentle on how we're forcing the new sign compliance. I have a if, question. Can I ask one question? Please. The, if the name of the company or the name of the business was New Star Liquors, that was the official name, would that be illegal? Um, it would be illegal. And we have had that question because there was one called West Side Liquor. Um, and they were forced to change that sign. What did they change it to? Just West Side? <laughs> I'm actually not sure. <laughs> the West Side Groceries. They changed it to the West Side Groceries, I believe. Okay. I'll ask your questions. Yeah, my, uh, yeah go ahead. Jack, no, that, was, my, that was my question. Oh. oh, okay. So I don't know if this is an appropriate question for staff or who. It, I'm wondering how many violations have been at this establishment? No. State, city, county? Um, the only violation that I'm aware of is the sign. There could be others, but I'm not aware of any <laughs> other ones. Violation of? Any violations? No, not cigarette, no liquor for almost three, four years. And when was for the fire? Almost three or four years. But yeah. you have had violations. But, but you have had violations in the past for underage sales. All the, I mean, Quickstar does have them. I mean, Casey's yeah, have them. But okay. we but at least that's the and question. for selling, it seems like there was a some sort of um, selling something illegal, some packets or something that I read about. That was before us, ma'am. You were not the owner at that no, time. No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I thought you were talking about the cigarette sale or any, liquor. Yeah, any. No. We was not at that time present. So I have one quick question. If this is not approved today, what will you do? What would I do? Yes. Do you play again? But that won't help. So will you change your name to convenience store? Will you, like, how will this affect, will you keep it just tobacco vape? The problem, uh, I think uh, I don't know how to explain that to you because this is a new business. That's what I consider that as a new business. And uh, it needs to be advertised outside. The only way I can do it, so if I have the signage outside, it's not, they have a point. They're probably thinking if I put the liquor in there, I generate, I'm not generating any business right now because people are not well aware what really we are. 
<clears throat> Not to seem harsh, <clears throat> but I don't think the name of your business outside of the legal parameters is of the purview of the city. So if a business is not able to generate business due to a name choice that is legal but not productive, that is not the city's fault, if you understand what I'm saying. So like uh, we used to have I wireless over there, and we have a signage outside, and the people, you know, my, even the neighbors, they were thinking we just a phone store. They didn't know that we have a beer and liquor in there. So sometimes signage does make a big impact on businesses. 100% true. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the name itself, if, if, if Quickstar was never known, no one knew what Quickstar, like for me, I came from the East Coast. I didn't know what Quickstar was, but I assumed they had certain products. Their name does not correlate to the, it's the city's does not have the purview to say or to be held at fault for a name that does not generate business because you're not allowed to use a specific word. Because other businesses have been have proven, uh, Blue Barn, uh, McDonald's, other businesses have proven that having a name that is legal means you can still sell a product. So what I'm trying to get at is, and not trying to seem harsh, but you could pick another name that would still convey that you sell. If, you, if your name were con whatever convenience store, I personally would assume that you sell alcohol, for example. And I think a lot of people would. So you can't hold the city at fault for not being able to use the word liquor for the reason that you don't have business. I think I am not holding them any fault in anything. I'm requesting them to yes. allow me. I'm not holding them a hostage, no. I'm just asking extra permission. I told you earlier, maybe okay. they're right. They all the laws and everything, they're right about them. Mm -hmm. But the only thing I needed to right now, because I'm a new, so I can advertise it. Right. So I'm not asking for, uh, you know, I'm not holding them against them, no. Not you. If you're asking me that, no. That's not their fault. <clears throat> so uh, another way of saying it is you can name it. And if you say the quick start. And it would still, construe the same point. So I, I just don't think that's a valid argument, I guess. Um, I'm not sure we can, we can go back to the board here. If you say that Quickstar, Quickstar is a multi-billion dollar industry. They are already well known mm -hmm. rather than a new star liquor. Right. So I have to put myself in the market to let them know I exist. Yes. Quickstar doesn't have to do that. They are already famous enough. Yes. Their name is their brand. Though. Mr. Chair of Staff, just to make sure it's clarified, the actual business name isn't at issue here because the business name is yeah, New Star. Sign. It's really the sign. Yeah, it, it's just the other components of the yeah. sign, but the actual business name is New Star, which, yeah, doesn't have any issues. Right. Thank but you. you're understanding what I'm saying over here, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks. Is there anybody here wish to speak against the request? Okay. What's the board want to do here? Make a motion. Well, do we? Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead, somebody. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to deny the request by New Star at 315 Fletcher Avenue for a variance to the 600 foot setback requirement from a protected use and 250 foot setback requirement from another non-limited alcohol sales use to convert an existing limited alcohol sales use to a non-limited alcohol sales use for the following reasons. Uh, that the request would appear to have a negative impact on the area by allowing a non-limited alcohol sales use in close proximity to protected uses. Number two, the request could allow for an over concentration of non-limited alcohol sales uses and number three that all signage at this location be brought into compliance. Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there any further comment before we vote? I feel like my statement 
understands true here. Because um, it just sounds like an, uh, his objective is to keep his, his, his advertising. But there are two points that really disturb me, and one we didn't mention just now that uh, Chris did when he was talking, is that this was brought to the city and the sign was changed. And that disturbed me quite a bit, that he's, it was approved uh, without that wordage, and then it was put back on mm-hmm. behind their backs, essentially. And if we, I feel mm-hmm. like if you don't stick with, if we make this exception, then you don't receive, you know, what's the point of the, the permit process at all? Correct. I think the alternative to go to a non-limited alcohol sale isn't a isn't a good alternative. In other words, we're allowing a business to expand its look its alcohol sales if we would have if the motion had been different. Yes. Um, so I'm a little torn here, but I'll leave it at that. Ready for a vote. I guess if there's no comments, further comments. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. I'm sorry, it was turned down. Okay, any further discussion? Of any other items? <clears throat> and to verify we are not in uh, no December meeting. We do not have a December meeting. Correct. Correct. <laughs> so we'll probably count on a big meeting in January. Yeah. All right, I'll bring the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> you should have brought it tonight. Is there any votes we have to take next month or uh, in yeah, January? Eric, Eric and I talked about that. We probably should have put uh, election of officers on this agenda, but we'll just. We're putting it on January's agenda. All right. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. Yeah, be happy. Happy Smile. New Year. Hi, Jerry, yeah. are you okay? Oh, I had the worst cold, and now it's just, you know, coming up. I'm on the mend, but once that cough starts, it's oh. <laughs>